All right, hello everyone and happy Monday. Um, today we want to discuss a topic um, and it's really of why we need to supplement. Big one. Yes, very big one. Um, it, it doesn't have to go into that much depth to really understand why nutritional supplements are necessary for our bodies. And this is a question that we get often. Right. And I'm sure it's also maybe some pushback that you get when, when trying to discuss nutri our live good nutritional supplements sure. to somebody and they say, well, I don't need to take supplements. Yeah, I don't like supplements. Why would I take them? Right, or I, I'm healthy. Or I eat a healthy enough ba balanced diet. I'm healthy. I feel great. What do I need them for? Right, right. right. So, um, I mean, that's a great thing if you feel great. Yeah, sure. But, but yeah. we also want to let you understand you want that. that, yes. The goal. Even when eating a balanced diet, even when eating or living a healthy lifestyle, um, our nutrients are depleted in our body. Not every single one of them but I guarantee you've got one or more nutritional deficiencies. And what these nutritional deficiencies, I mean, they can cause a slew of health conditions sure. that you're just wondering like, why is this happening to me? Why do I feel like this? And it can be as simple as a one little vitamin or mineral that your body is deficient in. And adding that into your diet is like, oh my gosh, a wake up call. Everything starts to function properly. And again, you'll hear us talk a lot about our magnesium and how it's involved in over 300 reactions in the body. So think about that, just being deficient in that one little mineral, right? If that's going on, then some or all of those 300 reactions in the body aren't taking place properly. And then we aren't sure. living our healthiest lives or our healthiest selves. So, um, so I'm going to jump in with because I think this is people don't realize that they are taking supplements They're because fortified foods is exactly that. Right. They've added in vitamins or minerals because they've recognized this for over 100 years that there are vitamin deficiencies and that, um, you know, it's, it's like even if you do your best to eat your best, well, most well balanced diet and meals and you do everything that you think is just spot on, pro perfectly done correctly, you know, you're still dealing with. Um, science has shown that we're nine out of 10 people are deficient in at least one vitamin or mineral. Uh, so, and you can see this, like, so the way that they, do you mind if I go into this about recommended daily allowance and the whole diet, dietary value thing? So um, the FDA has been fortifying foods for over a hundred years. I think it started with iodine uh, for goiter, for thyroid function. So we've been iodizing our salt for over a hundred years. Then we started uh, fortifying other foods for, to make sure that we're getting enough vitamin D, vitamin A, calcium, all our B vitamins. I mean, so milks, milk, dairy products, cereal, breads, snack foods, fruit juices, all for, I mean, not all fortified, but most of them are fortified. And they're doing it because they're trying to prevent disease, right? So vitamin D deficiency or super low deficiency would be rickets. Vitamin C would be scurvy. Uh, there's a vitamin B deficiency. Uh, and so that's the case with most vitamins and minerals. And the way that they, the way that the labeling requirements on foods now with, with the FDA, they follow their dietary value or daily value. And that's based on the RDI, recommended daily intake. This does not take into account age, gender, pregnancy status, nothing. Right. It Whether you're not. a vegan or not, that's right. a big one because right. it's different. Um, you're lacking different nutrients. Yeah. And so it really doesn't take any of those variables into account. So you can imagine the amount of inaccuracy there is though. So, and they're doing this, when you look at a dietary nutrition label, supplement facts label, you're seeing those, the de percent daily value but based on the RDI. So again, no age, no pregnant, uh, no age, no gender, not taking into account that, but they're only listing it to prevent disease. They have no, they're not trying to say, here's what optimal health might look like. Because right. again, there's no magic bullet or so like there's no absolute certainty as to what some one particular person should be taking in, in a vitamin or mineral. Right. And we know this. And Lisa and I are both huge advocates for eating whole foods and clean, healthy foods. But we know at the end of the day, even with despite all of our best efforts, and it's what we would love for everybody to do is eat all of these foods and get all of your vitamins and minerals and be perfectly healthy. But it's just not happening. It's not happening. Um, and so that is just a little bit side kind of back history on the way that the FDA does label these. So definitely not anywhere even close to a perfect science. They're literally just saying here, this amount of vitamin D to prevent rickets, right? right? This amount of vitamin C to prevent scurvy. It's so again, we're not in that, we're not in the world of just identifying uh, and preventing disease. We're saying we want to optimize health and how do we do that? Well, supplementation is a huge part of optimizing right. health. Definitely. And I, I found it very interesting this morning. I was kind of just like 
because a lot of people come to me with, you know, Dr. Google answers. Yeah. And so I just was plugging in, like, why do we need nutritional supplements? And I know what sites that we use and I know what, what, you know, resources that are legit and that we rely on. And I also now got to see everything that Dr. Google is plugging in there. And there's so much of it that was like, um, some were like, well, you shouldn't need nutritional supplements because you should be able to get everything from your diet. All this like should, should but, but yet the FDA fortifies foods, right? So, it, it's very twisted. twisted. Um, okay. And like, even if you are, this goes back into, I talk a lot about like how our soil has changed our modern farming techniques. Sure. So even if say you take Ryan and I, and we are eating a perfectly well balanced diet, we are making sure every day we are getting our organ meats and our, our seaweeds to get the iodine and fermented our foods. fermented foods and yeah. fruits and vegetables and everything, right. doing everything. Then you have to think about the modern farming techniques, sure. right? Modern and, and yeah, things are just, our soil is not as rich as it used to be. So we're growing these plants, fruits, vegetables in the soil that um, maybe our, our farm animals that we will eat are consuming, but then also that we're consuming those foods. And then the, the animals are not getting the same nutrients. Yep. And then we eat the animals and we're not getting those nutrients or we eat the, the plants and we're not getting the same nutrients. So we think we're doing ourselves a great job. Um, and on, on paper, it looks really good. Sure. But then if you really go and get your blood level tested, your micronutrient exactly. level tested, then it's like an eye opener. It's like, yeah. God, I thought I was doing so well and I'm deficient in this, 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 and this. Enter nutritional supplements. Right. Um, good, I get, good point. That was solid. I get my micronutrients tested I, I try to do yearly. Um, and that way I just know for myself and it, it is forever changing. I cannot not think, you know, you can't just do it once and expect that to be it. Um, unfortunately it isn't like an out of pocket expense. I will tell you guys, I have a list of a few ones that you can do online. Um, if your practitioner does not do it, because it's typically from like a lifestyle medicine doctor or a functional medical doctor that will do these tests. Um, but super, you know, important to do if you really want to understand. Um, there's other things that deplete our nutrients. Big one is mental and physical stress. Mm. Depletes our bodies of nutrients. I think almost everybody out there has a level of stress, okay? And so then what's that doing to your body? Again, depleting those nutrients. So you think you're doing everything great, but then you're, you're stressed out, life is busy, kids, this, that, financials, and then our nutrients are depleted. You talk a lot about um, the three big ones: alcohol, stress, and drugs. Mm -hmm. Right? No, so alcohol, al alcohol, exercise, and drugs. So, so depleting minerals, al alcohol, of course, yes. Exercise, we know for sure, absolutely does. And going back to the whole idea that they're not accounting for age, gender, or um, or pregnancy status. Imagine three brothers. Imagine this one that's 20 years old in the military, active duty, very physically fit, very demanding life. Imagine another couch potato, like professional gamer, you know, and then there's, there's the one that's just unable to put on enough muscle mass. He's at home, but he's got other autoimmune conditions and disorders, maybe some insulin resistance. There is a tremendous uh, variation between, between those, those three individuals. So nutrient, when Lisa talked about micronutrient testing and, and how to really sort of optimize your health, that's really what you want to get to eventually, because the depletion of vitamins and minerals really does that depend on lifestyle and your goals. And I think you were going to lead down to the drug induced nutrient depletion. Yes. Yes. So dr drugs is the last and probably the biggest one because so many people are on prescribed medications now, pharmaceuticals and pharmaceuticals have borrowed a lot of their science from plants, but they've been isolated to interact in, in the biochemistry of the body in one specific way, usually. And they're really very targeted. And what ends up happening is they interrupt a pathway, a cascade of events. I mean, you can look at name the drug and I can give you something that it, something that it throws off whether it's a statin drug and throwing off coenzyme Q10, whether it's a water pill that's depleting your body of potassium and magnesium, you know, or a blood pressure medicine, or what about just some over the counter ones like antacids or allergy medicine? Oh my gosh, all the, all the reflux meds that we take for heartburn. I mean, those things are blocking all kinds of things from absorbing because they're altering the, the microbiota of the gut, the, the pH of the stomach. It's a disaster. So we've really got to be mindful of all of this and watch our zoom on drug induced nutrient depletion. We do go into a little bit, a lot more detail, which would be super beneficial for probably for you guys that are out there. And any questions you have, please email us on those. Right. So um, again, they, our Live Good supplements, they are supplements, they're nutritional supplements to a healthy diet. Right. right. 
they're not these supplements that are out there marketed for like this quick fix to like do something. Mm -hmm. These are literally to fill our nutrient gaps. Yes. These are a safety net to make sure on a daily basis we are getting what we need. Um, Cause I was looking at this, the center of, um, of disease control says, you know, we should consume about two cups of fruits and two to three cups of vegetables a day. Should be twice that amount. Yet though, they found out that 76% of adults don't eat enough fruit and 87% of adults don't eat enough don't veggies. Even, don't even hit the lowest recommendation. Right. So, and, and again, when we talk about this stuff, like the lowest recommendation, like how Ryan was talking right. about the RDIs, is that is just to get by. You hear me right. say a lot about surviving and thriving. Right. Do you just want to merely survive and maybe not really reach that longevity that you really should? Yeah. Or do you want to thrive? Do you want to be healthy and vibrant and live a long life? Again, thus increasing that health span or making sure that health span and that lifespan are equal. Man, well said. Perfect. I'm going to list these real quick. Brain fog, being stressed out or poor sleep, allergies, low energy, low libido, so low sex drive, pre-diabetes, constipation, or just poor bowels. If you've noticed that you're constipated one day and then you have, say, so runny stool the next. Um, what about infections and poor skin, mood swings, slow recovery, and body aches? And that's, if any of those, if you experience any of those, those are not normal. That is not, not to be normalized. And it has become normalized in our society. And it really shouldn't be because if you're dialed in your nutrition, if you dial in your sleep, your stress, your nutritional supplements, your exercise, the lifestyle, the pillars of health, these, these should be rare. These should be like, no, I don't deal with any of that. No, 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 no. <laughs> and ultimately dietary supplements are one of the main pillars of, of the health cycle. So guys, now I think if, if this hasn't answered the question as to why dietary supplements are important, then I don't know what will. If the writing is all over the place, it's evident. It's right in front of us. It's fortified junk foods like cereals and, and, and junky snack foods like and we shouldn't be eating. We shouldn't be eating those anyway. But they're telling you here, we need to put this in so that you don't get sick. And this is just a right. And what about a big one? I do want you to touch on because this is a lot more common than people think. But the MTHFR gene, yeah, like a mutation in it. Of course, we are just, and I have it. We are just not absorbing the. It's the, not absorption as much as it is just they're not able. They're not able to be used by the body. Right. So right. we need to like take more and mm -hmm. more and more and that's another reason why i really stay up to date on my um micronutrient test of course but i have a few so these are common um nutrient deficiencies and they're they're common but they're all in our our supplements and i want you to think about this okay well do i eat enough of this to make sure that i'm not deficient in this so big one okay iodine is very common nutrient deficiency and like ryan had mentioned earlier it affects the thyroid are you eating your seaweed every day? Are you eating seaweed every day? Because <laughs> I mean, we have seaweed here, we do. I like to have the seaweed snacks, but I don't eat it every day. Um, D3, very um, prominent in uh, fatty fish and egg yolk. But here come, a lot of these are gonna be common denominators of like the fatty fish and the egg yolk. But you think about this, we are not, we're told we're not supposed to eat too much fish because of our, you know, PCB, polluted, yeah, PCBs, polluted mercury, ocean. heavy metals, polluted ocean. Right. So you can say, oh, well, have your fatty fish one to two times a week. Well, therefore, you're not getting what you need to be getting from it because you need this stuff on a daily basis. Um, iron, very prominent in red meat, organ meat, sardines. Um, we do a good job with our organ meat. We try, sure. but I know a lot of people don't. Um, you know, it's not really something that we enjoy eating. You kind of got to sneak it in there. Red meat, you know, you're told not to eat it all the time. Um, so just things that, again, we're not eating on a daily basis. B12, very common. Again, high in organ meats, dairy. Vitamin A is a big one. Here comes your organ meat. And then your your fish liver oil. Um, calcium, big, you know, magnesium. But again, these are very common, very common nutrient deficiencies that, again, are very hard to get from a diet on an everyday basis. Not to mention we enter in our... Um, Super reds and super greens, those phytochemicals, same thing goes from modern farming. It is stripping the phytochemicals the, from our plants. We've got to make sure we're consuming these every day. Well, um, we're depleting the soil down to just dirt, right? We're not regenerating it. The plants don't have a way to thrive, so we continue to increase fertilization. We're dealing with increased pests, so we're using pesticides. Then we're like, oh, wait a minute. Um, we need to develop GMO crops that can handle all the pesticide, a glyphosate resistant. You're like, Whoa, like these crops are certainly not as nutrient dense as they really should be or once were. Right. Right. I mean, the, the, 
Yeah. So the GMO, like the whole thing is just a cycle. It's all, and we look, it's okay to admit our mistakes. We've gone down the path of this mass food production and tried to do it with large monocrops and have very obviously failed and we're not correcting our actions quick enough. Uh, and so there, therefore we just aren't getting the nutrients and the quality of the food. Right. And I didn't even touch on the fact um, that, and, and I think we all know this, but like, this is real organics. If you are not buying organics, like when they test, um, what was I listening to? I think on the podcast, they're talking about tomato, mm. right? A, a conventional versus sure. an organic tomato. And the nutrient profile was night and day different. Mm. I mean, the conventional tomato was like just depleted of all okay, its so vitamins. The organic is still organic, not exactly. what it should be, right? Exactly. So, but so again, you're trying, you're trying to do a good thing. You're right. going to buy your organics, but it's hard to also buy everything organic. I mean, I go to the grocery store and I look at my- it's fortune thing of raspberries that's Crazy. this big and it's like $6.99. I'm like, oh my gosh. But the, you know, the conventional one is like $3 cheaper, but then I know like, what's the point? I'm not going to get those nutrients. I might get the yummy taste, but I'm not going to get the nutrients. And then I'm exposing myself to pesticides, which are further going to deplete my body of its nutrients. Oh. Ah. Oh, it's just like <laughs> guys thank you so much for tuning in um do you want to look at even... yeah let's just see if there's did you scroll already? yeah go ahead go to the top just scroll it up yeah. we'll try to go real quick there's... we didn't even talk about the supplements but it's pretty clear like the way cool. that live, like you said live good fits a sort of a, a paradigm shift not necessarily a magic bullet once like you know okay these are some specific um Personal questions, email those to me, lisa livegood.com, please. Um, difference between super reds and super greens, the ingredients. Um, okay, Bruce, we just touched on about eating organic. Mm -hmm. What is this? Oh. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes my shirt. <laughs> uh, we, 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 should, we should think about adding these ones, huh? I think we had those made off as a one off. Yes. Yeah, all right, guys. Well, a lot of great questions, mm -hmm. but again, very, they don't really apply to. Going too fast for my eyes. Okay, so somebody is talking about um, like a, just a, a, a blood panel. A regular blood panel that you do from your doctor is not going to do, is not going to show you micronutrients. So that's what I was saying. It's a specific test that you need to discuss with your doctor about and not all doctors do it. Typically functional medical doctors, lifestyle medicine doctors, it is an out-of-pocket expense, really ranges anywhere from like 300, 600, like it's no joke, but I do really recommend doing it. Um, and again, I did say I would list the ones that um, I know you can do online. So let's get checked, Everly Well and My Lab Box. Hmm. Um, if you need those, again, email me. But again, let's get checked. Everly Well or My Lab Box. So these are online ones that you can order kits and do. Um, sometimes they're they're um, urine kits. You know, it's not where you have to get, um, do a blood draw, but yes. But each one is different. But again, I find this extremely important. I mean, this will go down and list. And something about mine, I didn't touch on this that I just recently had done. Now. I take, where's our meetings? <laughs> I take two scoops of these per day. I actually had a question on this too, an email. I also take one to two servings of our protein powder, which is rich in amino acids. I eat two, at least two servings of meat per day, rich in amino acids. I was deficient in two amino acids. That's my body. So I'm just letting you know, like you think like just by doing that bare minimum, that RDI, that RDA, whatever, that you're doing enough for your body, but each body is unique. My vitamin C was also low this time, but my nutrient panel I did six months ago, my vitamin C wasn't. So things also change. So if you can do these on the regular every six to 12 months, I highly recommend it. I know it's an out-of-pocket expense, which is tough, but your health is your wealth, guys. Cool. All right, good job. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Have a happy Monday, super productive week. We will see you next time. All right, bye guys. Bye.